that's that's what the director's report was like. <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, the Tuesday, June 20th, the 2017 meeting of the Wilmot Public Library District Board of Trustees, please come to order. Jan, will you please call the roll? Certainly. Okay, I have to do this in a different order tonight. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Trustee Wolf. Here. Trustee Barshus, yes. Trustee McLaughlin. Oh, oh Laughlin. Laughlin. It's okay. Trustee McDonald. Here. Trustee Rogers. Here. And Trustee Johnson. Johnson. Right. Here. <laughs> um, uh, the first item of business is, well, a, a, actually, sort of a point of, or I, I finalized the committee assignments. I'll just read them for the record, although this is not anything anyone votes on. Uh, facility, uh, Jenny will be the chair. On that will be Jan and Ron. Finance, Ron is the chair. On that is Dan and Lisa. Uh, Illinois and Advocacy, Jan and Dan. Uh, minutes Audit Committee, the really plum job, uh, Jan and Dan. Uh, communications, and here I couldn't decide uh, it's a new committee, uh, Lisa and Stewart and Ginny. Um, Lisa and Stewart, I'm calling co-chairs, but you can figure out yourselves as we sort of will fight over. We'll fight over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hope we'll see if we'll debate then, over it. Uh, <laughs> we have the Illinois Intergovernmental Cooperation <laughs> Committee, which is basically we have a meeting annually where we invite other members of um, governmental entities in our that are relevant to Wilmette, and I'm on that, and we can always have one other trustee attend. So those are the committee assignments for this year. Okay. Um, could I have a motion to approve for these two years? Um, the May minutes? So located moved. behind. Okay, second. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the minutes are approved, and we will post those now that they're approved on our website. Um, presentations. We have none scheduled, and public comment. Now, I know we have some members of the public, as it were, here, but they are here with respect to items uh, later on the agenda, so we will skip over the public comment. Uh, we'll move on to the uh, Treasurer's Report. Okay, you have the financial notes uh, in your materials. Um, this is not a particularly um, busy time of year for receiving uh, taxes. We got just under $33,000 in real estate taxes, uh, 8600 in replacement taxes, uh, gifts and donations, for about 7,200 and 3,405, it's nothing extraordinary. Um, and at this point, our general fund expenses are uh, below 80 percent, um, with one month left in the uh, the fiscal year. Um, you have the uh, attachment for. Uh, checks and um, the payments for uh, the past month um, and with that information available I move approval of the bills and salaries for May. So a motion to approve the bills and salaries. Second. Is there a second? Ah, Stuart seconds. Is there any discussion with respect to any of the uh, bills and salaries questions located behind attachment three? I just wonder what Canopy is. Pardon? Canopy LLC? Just curious. Yeah, it's a new streaming service. So um, you can actually get some classic movies that way. Oh, really? Uh huh. Ah. Like Platinum Collection kind of movies and stuff yeah. like that, and it's other streaming uh, media content. Thank you. Okay. Uh, it's been moved and seconded. If there's no further um, uh, discussion, could I? Could, Jan, could you call the roll on that? Sure. Trustee Johnson? Yes. Trustee Rogers? Yes. Trustee McDonald? Aye. Trustee O'Loughlin? Aye. Trustee Barshus? Yes. Trustee Wolf? Aye. Okay. We have two action items. The first one is a consent in lieu of a joint annual meeting of the Wilmot Public Library Endowment Fund. Uh, we have to find the consent uh, attached, uh, located also behind that is the um, tax return that we file with respect both with the uh, 
Illinois Attorney General who regulates charities and with the IRS. This is the most recent one we filed. The next one we will file will be in um, September-ish. Are there any questions? I move approval. I second. It's been moved and second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, prevailing wage. Um, the ordinance uh, adopting the prevailing wage rates, rates excuse me, ordinance number 2016-17-185, um, as the explanatory note provides, that we are required to adopt an annual ordinance that determines pre prevailing wages for the area and states that the library will pay contractors at that rate. Um, we adopt an ordinance that says that we uh, adopt the wages determined to be the prevailing wage for the Cook County. Um, just a question, just a question if yes. I could. Um, do we have any choice in this? No. Okay, no. I didn't think so, but I'm just, <laughs> not I'm that I want to underpay any ordinance. <laughs> uh, can I get a second? Second. Uh, maybe because may this be amounts useful. money. Maybe we should have a roll call on this one. It may be useful to note, however, that since we have no construction plans for the coming year, we have point, some some landscaping, mm -hmm. and um, then our landscapers will have to pay prevailing wage if we have redo uh, landscaping okay. work. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But we don't have anything under contract. At we moment. don't have anything under contract at this um, point. You know, but the bottom line is that this will have minimal impact on us in the coming year because we're not expecting to do anything that would you never can tell would <laughs> fall into a major activity unless something changes that we don't. Um, since this, I don't know, it doesn't really involve wage, but why don't we we'll give Jen the opportunity to call the roll again? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Trustee Johnson. I, yes. I, Trustee Rogers. I, 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 Trustee Ruth I, McDonald. Trustee Olafson. Trustee Barshis, yes. Trustee Wolf. Yes. Okay. All right. That, um, then the next is we have um, two patrons um, who um, we need to address um, in this meeting. The first one is low, uh, the first issue is look uh, relative to the material located behind attachment six um, with respect to you see the um, materials there mm -hmm. um, Heather would you like to make a or who's going to make a statement with respect to that just to summarize generally the situation. Sure. Um, I gave an attachment here. Um, Ms. Maloney, um, there was a recent uh, disruption that caused her to be banned from the computer lab. Um, she was being very insulting to staff and this particular incident she um, was yelling at a young mother for not shushing her child and for having her child in the computer lab and had followed the young mother outside of the computer lab and was harassing her in that verbal way. And um, because the staff on duty at the time was familiar with Miss Maloney, they stepped in at that time and told her to, to stop. Uh, she yelled at them and uh, I was called in. I came downstairs, went to talk to her along with Fred Wallace and, because I always tell my staff, I always take a witness, I do that same. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I approached her in the computer lab, I just, all, I leaned over and I said, I'd like to talk to you outside of the computer lab about this inappropriate behavior. Uh, and she, she said no, and I said, no, we really need to talk, and then she said, F you, uh, and just stood up and stomped out and cursed and cussed her whole way down uh, out the door. And I, uh, as she was leaving, I said, ma'am, you are banned, and she said, good. So um, I immediately issued a ban until this board meeting for Ms. Maloney based mm -hmm. on that one incident. However, 
um, looking at the incident reports that are attached and talking to staff about this particular patron. Um, she has had disruptive incidents going back for a couple years. This is not new behavior. She has been given many, many opportunities to correct her behavior. Um, she is demeaning and insulting to both staff and patrons and creates a hostile and aggressive environment. Um, so I am recommending a year ban based upon the cumulative effect of this chronic misbehavior. So moved. Thank, thank you. So there's, um, Ron has moved. Is there a second? I second it. Okay. We've been going back since 2013. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, no. Is there any further discussion or questions that um, you might have of Heather or mm -mm. Betty is here. I think you, you know. Do you have any questions? Any? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's been moved and second that this patron be banned um, for one year from the date of this meeting. Um, and all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. And Heather, you will. Um, I will send another help. letter. Mm -hmm. Okay. The next one. Um, um, we have some people that are speaking, and, the, and I think the way to approach this is let Heather present the matter. Um, I think um, I think it makes the most sense for you to pres I think you want to speak with respect to this matter, mm -hmm. and then give the person who's at at whose whose behavior is, is at issue the chance to respond to both of those pieces if he chooses to do so. Um, you have the material um, located behind tab um, seven, um, and and we do based upon what I understand. I do consider this a, a serious matter. Um, so with that, okay, here. Um, one note in the letter, I had written it to Scott Douglas. Um, I had made the error of thinking Douglas was your last name, sir. I understand it is in fact Graham. Yeah. So my apologies for um, that incorrect um, name on the letter. Uh, so just so that the board is able to correct that on your copies as well. But I also know you got Graham. plenty of warning. The fact that he's here indicates that he got appropriate notice of this. Yes. Um, protocol is that when I do issue a ban, I always make sure to have a copy available at the circulation desk. Should we not have an address or should the patron come in before they receive the certified letter? Uh, and then um, Betty was the one who issued the letter to Mr. Graham. <laughs> so this um, is also another cumulative problem. Um, I had issued a verbal warning back on April 11th about inappropriate behavior exhibited by Mr. Graham. He had been um, staring at female employees, passing notes to female employees. He asked a particular employee out on a date, um, and he was making people very, very uncomfortable and feeling um, frightened. Uh, there were issues with physical boundaries in terms of him uh, crossing over uh, too close uh, or lingering too long uh, at closing time, things like that. Uh, at the time of the April 11th incident with one of our staff members, uh, Cinta, which is in the incident report here, um, I made the judgment call at that time to issue a verbal warning. And so I issued a verbal warning along with uh, Randy and uh, I told Mr. Graham very clearly that this behavior is not accept acceptable in the library um, and that he needed to respect people's physical space and not talk to or follow female employees. Um, and that um, the next time it happened, then he would be excluded from the library. So he was very clearly warned at that time. Then there was uh, this final incident, which happened, the date on here is May, May 31st, May 30th and May 31st, when um, one of my employees, Colleen Rees, came and uh, said that her daughter had reported this. And the monitors also filled out an incident report for that night where uh, 
She is a 16 year old young female employee and she is a shelver and Mr. Graham had been following her around the building uh, from floor to floor and uh, talking to her in the elevator and this apparently it happened twice um, but it was not on our radar, radar until the second incident is my understanding. Um, once I heard this, I immediately um, talked to the people involved and we did call the police to ask uh, to make sure that um, Mr. Graham's behavior was on their radar and to ask for their assistance in issuing this ban. So, that is, those are the facts of the case from the library's perspective. Um, I understand you would like to make a statement? I would. Okay, can one you speak up? Just use that. Microphone? Okay. Yeah. I actually would like to talk as a parent and not as Absolutely. a staff member Absolutely. of the library. Can you state your name? Oh, Colleen Reese, a resident of Wilmette. Mm -hmm. um, again, I'm a resident of Wilmette and I would like to state that having a young 16 year old female um, we have spoken many times in regards to how to carry yourself and be aware of your surroundings and so on she is 16 she is well aware of this however when she started working at the library I um, didn't feel I needed to tell her about safety and boundaries because this is a safe place many people are welcome in the library. So the first incident she didn't even tell me about and the second time when I came to pick her up she works from 6 to 9 on Tuesday nights. Uh, the second time I picked her up she was upset and said you know there's that gentleman I'm not sure who he is but he she pointed him out he was sitting in front of the library. He, creeps me out with her words you know he kind of looks at me weird he's asking me questions and I immediately said that's not allowed you're a young girl any adult should know better than to approach a young female in a secluded area of any building that it's not safe and if it ever happens again that you are to call one of the monitors immediately go to whichever place in the library is the closest to you, whether it be a reference librarian, a youth librarian, monitors, or switchboard, and have them contact the monitor immediately because that behavior is not allowed. She didn't know this. She thought, I work in a public building. I'm just supposed to mind my P's and Q's within safety guidelines. And I said, absolutely not. You are a young female. That's just not allowed in any situation. I came to pick her up. Uh, again one evening at five minutes to nine on a Tuesday that is her regular night I just pulled up into the parking lot and she called me crying saying are you here yet I said what's wrong I thought maybe she got her grades from school or something she said it happened again with that guy I didn't even say goodbye I hung up and I immediately walked into the library and I went um, through the back employee entrance and the all three monitors were there um, Jim Kaspari, Ed Crabb and uh, Ken Kramer I believe it was Ken, I'm, I'm sorry, I know it was Jim and Ed for certain um, I asked them what was going on, they had all seen my daughter in the back crying in the back shelving room they said they found out that um, he was talking to her again and I don't even know what he said but if it makes my daughter cry I'm sorry mama bear comes out and I want to know what's going on then I went to the um, person in charge of the library at the time uh, who is um, Betty Georgie and I asked her if she knew what was going on she did not so she immediately went and talked to the monitors as well and um, then uh, Jim Kasperi went and talked to him. I don't know what he said. I wasn't there. I did not want to be there. That's not my place. Um, but as a mom of a young female who wants to get out into the workforce, she will be going off to college soon, trying to start a you know, resume of working with the public and so on. I do not want her to feel unsafe as her first point of reference working with the public. 
I don't think she should have to feel unsafe. That's why we moved to this type of community, because it is a safe community um, with very little activity, and I want it to remain that way. Not just for her, but there is another young 16-year-old shelver that works here as well for her safety as well. It is summertime. There are lots of young high school volunteers um, that will be in the library, I believe, for their safety as well. Um, that it would be necessary to not allow this gentleman in the library for longer than just the span that has occurred. Thank you. Thank you. Um, my name is Andy Reese, um, her better half, um, and this is an issue. This is an issue. This isn't just this gentleman's issue. There's been another issue within town of um, somebody else doing the exact same thing. Okay, and he's been at the library, I think, before. I don't know the gentleman's name, but he, in this case, this gentleman is a registered sex offender. In any case. You got to take. You got to draw a line. Okay. Are, are we going to let this happen? Are we going to worry about making sure we serve a few people at the library in this case, or are we going to serve the masses? Okay. And I'm sorry. Some people have to be excluded from, but they're excluded on their own behavior. The young lady that you spoke about earlier. These are people who are making the library unusable to potentially staff, other patrons. I don't understand why it's just, you, you may have to do this, but why it's not just cut and dry. It's like, you know what, it's inappropriate, you've done it twice, you're done. And it's not a year bad, it's like you're done coming to the library, okay? Otherwise, you're setting yourself up for problems, okay, down the line. If, the, if this happens to my daughter, if something were to happen to my daughter, okay, I don't think you guys want to be on the receiving end of what's going to be happening in rehashing these conversations again because it'll get extremely ugly that you didn't have that you didn't just draw a line okay everybody wants to be you know um, thoughtful and um, politically correct this isn't the time to be politically correct when it happens to your child your grandchild all of a sudden it's why didn't somebody do something okay now's the time to make a decision okay and, and not a long and a long-standing one okay if, this, if you have to send the message to everybody else, send the message. At least you don't have to deal with these problems going forward. And you know the library is a safe place. Otherwise, you're hanging out the for sale sign saying, everybody's welcome here, including um, you know, the predators of our neighborhoods. Please, come on in. There's kids here. You know, Help yourself. I don't think that's the message you want to be sending. But this needs to be stopped. And going forward, it's... This is a, ban a lifetime ban. You continued this. You've he was asked to stop. He continued. He didn't continue six months later. He didn't continue a month later. He didn't continue years later. It was within a month he did it again. He has no care about rules, okay? He doesn't care about other people's safety. He doesn't care about other people's use of the library. So send the message. They're not welcome, okay? We're talking about a few people at the risk of the masses of our community. Okay, when it, when it comes to your children, your grandchildren, okay, and then this becomes a problem, you're gonna be asking yourself, why don't we make a decision? I don't think you wanna be having that second thought down the line. There's no reason to hesitate what your decision today should be. It should be a ban, lifetime ban, end of story, okay? Otherwise, you're opening yourself up, the, the library and the village, to other problems. Thank you. Um, Mr. Graham, is there something that you wanted to say? Yeah, the statement. C could you stand and... Um, sure. And state your name and... Address if you have one. My name is Scott Crum. I do not have a current address. Okay, these charges can be explained with one sentence. 
about 40 years ago, I was targeted by the federal government. My current assumption is by the CIA, pretty much from my blonde ponytail. I wasn't doing anything exciting, like drugs, or revolution, or even politics. What is my 40 years of evidence, and why would I believe it is still going on? I will say two things. Many years ago, I applied for a job at a science company. The man was straightforward and told me, we can't hire you. I was on a list. Sir, I don't want to no, dispute you. I'd this, like this you to, law. can you? This is, this, this directly relates to what's happening. This is not long. I try to be brief. I was on a list, in those days it was for radicals and revolutionaries, I would think. Today people are listed as terrorists. As my thinking evolved, I thought they had made a mistake, then that they didn't care if they did. Right now I think it was the ponytail. Eventually I studied politics a great deal and drastically changed my politics. You don't think that helped, do you? It, it did not. These charges are a Chicago smear campaign. Some of them were crafted by corrupt people and friends of the mob. I will now run through the charges in reverse order. First, there is a piling on of a bunch of vague and indirect accusations, which might even be infinitely expanded. In America, we are allowed to know charges ahead of time that we may prepare, prepare our defense. We do not accept secret charges and may face our accusers. Now about the teenage girl. I made harmless remarks to her on about two occasions. I spoke to her for seconds total. The two remarks were, the first time I asked her about a reading, the second time is, uh, as I wrote in a letter to the library before, I left this probably May 31st. Uh, let us suppose that girl thought I was following her. I didn't even know she was working that day. So likely she thought I was following her because I was upstairs. I then saw her by the elevator and asked how she was doing. That was my second remark. Wait, I'm not done. Yeah, I, I think we can, um, if you could finish this within the next minute, that would be great. Oh, no, I really, I have the right to, to I don't, it, this isn't long, but I have, I have the right to could you send say it my poop. One minute, go ahead. I really don't have a lot more. We have established that she acquired the opinion I shouldn't be talking to her. Next on to the more general charges in Heather's letter. It sounds just awful like I'm constantly abusing women. Clearly I've had quite a reign of terror for a long time. And I am hereby PC damned. The charges are silly. I see four men working security at the same time, and more can be done, of course. If women on the so you've got 15 more seconds. Just if to women let you on know. the staff are such shy doormats, I know that they would at least have protected their patrons. The letter to the Sinta was about a. It was a brief note about a disaster in my life. Okay, it wasn't Graham, hitting on her. Thank you very much. It wasn't hitting on her. 
But I think at this point, um, uh, unless anyone feels he further help in helping us make a decision, um, thank you very much. If you could take a seat, please. Thank you. Well, don't I have the right to make a statement? Yes, you did, and you, for, you did for quite some time. Um, I really have only, I don't have that much more. Um, I'll tell you what, what, you could submit it in writing um, to be part of the record. Okay, I'll um, do that. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, so we have a, um, can I have a motion to uh, ban? The motion as stated is for one year. Uh, material. I know we've heard for, from the parents that perhaps that's not sufficient, but at this point, uh, um, well, legally we we cannot do a lifetime ban legally. Um, however, we can extended always, we, we, uh, we can always extend bans year by year. Um, that's the the law that we do follow. So any ban um, that is over a year, this <clears throat> same board would be able to reconvene and reissue another ban should they decide to do so at that time. Is there any discussion? I move, I move that we, okay, just let's get to get the motion on the table, I move that we accept the recommendation for a one-year ban effective today. I second that. Okay, so we moved in second. Discussion? I have a, just a, a couple of points of information. Um, we have clear policy on this sort of a situation and occasionally have also banned other patrons when their behavior was inappropriate. Uh, so this is not uh, setting a precedent. The, uh, the fact is that this is a, an occurrence that is anticipated in our policy and is addressed clearly in our policy. The policy calls for staff to take action until the next board meeting, which is what they did. And for the board, only the board has the authority under our policy and according to our attorneys under um, state law to uh, make the ban longer than until the next board meeting. So that's what we're addressing here. Um, there isn't any question that uh, the uh, concerns expressed here have been well documented, as our policy requires. And so, you know, what we are doing here is not uh, singling out any particular patron. It is based solely on the behavior and the assessments that have been carried out by staff. Thank you, Ron. Any? I think Dan, you wanted to speak. That's fine. Thank okay. Um, any further discussion? Okay, there's a motion on the floor to um, ban Mr. Graham for one year from the date of this meeting. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, it's unanimous. Uh, Mr. Graham, you are hereby banned from the library, and we would ask that you leave the premises. Thank you. Okay. Um, Ask that you leave the premises now. Cynthia. Okay. Cynthia's going to call them. Yeah, we'll go with the monitor. Yeah, that's good about <laughs> Not this one right now. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. Thank you so much. Okay, bye. Facility. Condition assessment proposal located behind attachment eight. Um, from SQC, FQC, who was our um, 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 excuse me, who uh, did the, was the construction manager for our most recent constru uh, construction manager for our most recent construction, um, and of course. All of us being homeowners, it never ends. Um, so Heather is, at this point, um, proposing to do a facility review to look at items that were not covered, which was primarily a second floor renovation and a heating and air conditioning. We did do some roof work, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, um, that's not everything, and it never stops. So, right. so um, the proposal is for review of the building um, and to 
be able to give us some guidance. It's particularly appropriate because we are going into a strategic plan. It will also give us a frame if there's anything that we need to address for um, when we go into the strategic plan. The proposal is for a fixed fee of $7,500. Can I get a motion to accept so the proposal? Motion. Second. Okay. You, I, you, move. You second. Okay. So second. Okay. Yeah. Heather, is there anything more that you wanted to add other than right here? No, I mean, I only brought you the one quote because FQC knows our systems like nobody else knows our systems. Right. And so it actually saves us money in the long run because they can do it a lot more quickly. I'm sorry, who seconded? I did. Okay. Quick question. HVAC's in there. Is that an update to see what the existing is? Is that yeah, a lot of what time, the nature of, the nature of that is just life of system, so that we can have it very clearly marked out, you know, this particular system will need to be replaced in 20 years, or this one. We know a lot of that already about our HVAC, but it's good to make sure to include it in the proposal so that, um, so that it's all in one place, so that we have all of our system lives listed. Mm -hmm. But in, in as much as they did it before, Right. Is that not duplicate and they can't do a merge? I mean, that, right. That's they will do that. They will use the information if they have it, but if they don't, they might have to reassess some of it. Like, we still have one unit that is old, for example. And so they need to assess when's it going to go. Yeah. The exterior envelope systems, mm -hmm. this is. This is what we have not addressed before. Right, and there's a lot with um, things like our, our tuck pointing and our windows and okay. um, yep. the walls and yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. There was one window that blew out while we were meeting during the construction. And you remember in the... Uh, <laughs> I never knew that. Really? Well, blew out is a little dramatic for what actually happened. <laughs> So it's been moved and seconded uh, to accept the proposal. Uh, could we get a roll call on this, Jim? Mm -hmm. Trustee Johnson. Yes. Trustee Rogers. Yes. Trustee McDonald. Yes. Trustee O'Loughlin. Trustee Barshus. Yes. Trustee Wolf. Aye. So the next item is lighting, mm -hmm. exterior lighting. Um, this is all exterior? Yes. Oh. <laughs> Could you talk a little bit about this? How yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is um, exterior lighting and um, it includes, actually since Rick here, Rick is here, you might be able to help us a little bit better, but it includes the floodlights, uh, like the flagpole light and the light that um, mm -hmm. shines up to the building and things like that. Right? Yeah, all in the walkways. Exterior fixtures we currently have will be upgraded to LED, mm -hmm. and then we will be supplementing that with two fixtures in the southwest corner over here where there's very little exterior light, and two for the parking lot, more towards the east end of the parking lot to supplement uh -huh. the light and south of the mm -hmm. as well. So would any of that be impacted if you're going to do landscape design out of the front? Would that be the it cart before the horse, or would the light be in, lights be impacted at all? Would it that shouldn't, but um, if the fixture does need to be moved at a future point in time, we will still have a new fixture to move. So. Uh, yeah. Are any of these um, motion sensor driven? Not motion, no. Okay, so they're all basically either they're, on or off? Yeah, it would be photo cell driven, but not motion. Okay. Driven. Okay, so they're basically uh, timed or, or set up with Correct. sensors yeah. to be on whenever it's dark. Correct, yeah. Right. And to answer your question, um, I think the only two fixtures that might be a case with is the flagpole and the um, the one looking at the sign up above. 
and we did talk about that, but we thought it would be better if we did it within the same um, proposal mm -hmm. so that all the lighting is from the same company with the same bulbs and the mm -hmm. same, you know, and all of that. Um, and that, yeah, like Rick said, we could move it temporarily and move it back, but at least it would, we'd have consistency in our outdoor um, design. But would they hold until it's done? If the design's gonna be done in the next, those two? I'm just curious. Yeah, timing-wise, that's a real good question. Um, I think the landscaping is going to take longer. We're not going to get any done this year. Right. Well, we might get some in the fall, but yeah, it's going to take a while. Um, part of it's the prevailing wage ordinance is tricky with landscapers um, to get a company that is able to abide by that. So yeah. It's mm -hmm. The the only other question is whether there's been any security survey with respect to this lane. What do you mean security survey? Like well is there any need for additional lighting related to security in the parking lot and around the building that might not be addressed with this proposal? I I make that um, or ask that question in part because we've got a new building that's uh, that's going to open by the end of the year across the alley and the volume of activity next to the library is going to ramp up considerably so the issue then is what if anything needs to be done to anticipate maintaining uh, secure lighting for staff and patrons throughout the area when it becomes a much more active location because of what's being constructed across the alley. Mm -hmm. We have not done a security survey. Um, we just looked at the existing fixtures and wanted to upgrade them. Okay, so this is an upgrade, not additional lighting for security, security purposes. Right. Right. Which we still well, there's four additional fixtures added. Okay. For the brightness. Existing. Where will those be? Two on the uh, south west corner of mm -hmm. the building here because they, we basically have no lighting out there right. other okay. than right. the one that shines up on mm -hmm. the sign. Mm -hmm. And then two more for the parking lot, primarily towards the eastern half of okay. uh -huh. the parking lot. So. Okay, what I would recommend then is that in addition to this work, we um, have some evaluation done of lighting with respect to the alley and the, as I said, the anticipated activity that is going to occur as that building is finished and becomes residential property. Mm -hmm. what, why do you think that would high, make the security risk higher? It's because, well, the issue, frankly, is that as you increase the volume of activity and traffic, you want to make sure that there are no unlit areas where someone could hide out or otherwise be undetected and create a risk. And I'm not suggesting that that exists, I'm suggesting that we need to have it evaluated to be sure that we're prepared for it before a problem occurs. We do have existing alley lighting that will be upgraded. Okay. Well, that may be sufficient. I'm just I'm mm -hmm. just suggesting that the that the changes that are going to occur adjacent to our property need to be um, taken into account in assuring that this meets the need. It may, I don't know. But since the question was answered that it hadn't been evaluated, then I'm suggesting that there might be some benefit in assuring that. And if in fact it turns out that there's any additional um, new lighting that would be appropriate that would address this issue, that it might be handled as uh, as an amendment to this contract as a change order if that's what's needed. The question is is simply to stay ahead of the pending activity in the alley and be sure that we aren't allowing for the existence of a problem that we could avoid. Could I just add to that briefly? Yeah. I think uh, I think it's a, a I think it's a great idea we should do this contract but I think uh, Ron's thought is a good one. Uh, particularly as I do think there's going to be a change in that village on parking lot but I think it's an opportunity for us to start to think broadly and maybe publicly about how we think that village owned lot might be lit 
I was so, going to speak to that later in the meeting. We yeah. have started conversations. <laughs> Good. You know. So I, I would just echo I, Ron's I, point that I think the only concern the, I have, Ron, is I feel that maybe we should just go ahead with the contract as is for right. now because. We're addressing I, current needs versus well, you know, current yeah, needs, yeah. and then just be mindful that we may have to come back and revisit it. Well, that's what I'm suggesting I, yeah. is that we go ahead with yeah. the current okay, contract, right. mm -hmm. but also evaluate the potential for yes. a I problem a that idea. could occur as early as the by the end of this year, if something we don't know about currently emerges with that building. But you know, I mean, the fact is that we don't know how that's going to be managed. There, there are many, many unanswered questions, and it may also lead to our making some recommendations that would require the participation of the village on the lighting issues mm -hmm. on the portion of the lot we don't control. So I'm just suggesting that this proceed. I don't recall if if we do if we need. I did we have a motion on this? No, you can no. Yeah. make it. All right. Well, then I move that we approve this contract. Uh, for some not to exceed eleven thousand dollars, but that it that concurrent with this, then not part of the motion, but just just as a follow up, that we also evaluate these other safety issues before this project is likely to be finished, or soon enough thereafter, so that it could be, you know, the same type of lighting and equipment could be added if necessary. I bet FQC could FQC help us with that on the sure. capital assessment, mm -hmm. yeah, sure. when they're doing I'm it. just saying, we've got a safety issue that we haven't evaluated okay. right next door, mm -hmm. and I don't want to leave it unattended because it wasn't in the present okay. contract. Mm -hmm. So we proceed with the present contract, but we also make sure that we're anticipating what we need to protect against that could occur with the opening of a building across the alley from us that's going to change a lot. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have a motion. Uh, it's moved and second. We. Uh, yes, second. There's a second? No, so I'll second it. Okay. Discussion. Thank you. So it's moved into second. Sorry. Jan, yes. Yeah, uh, this looks to me like we're talking about 44 fixtures. Is that correct? There's 22 on the left, the existing fixtures, and then 22 on the right, proposed fixture upgrade, or mm -hmm. is that part of the same thing? Are we just talking about 22, or are we talking about 44? I think it's I don't think we have 22. 44. It's 22. 22. So fixtures. it's just a repetition mm -hmm. that they're, if they need to be, these need to be upgraded. But they're 18 part of the existing original. and four new. Yeah, but they're, I'm talking about on this. They just didn't do it correctly on the contract. They didn't, they didn't delete the, the other ones. Okay. Yeah. yeah. 22 total fixtures. Yeah. Okay. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Um, okay. Can we get a roll call on this, Jan? Sure. Trustee Johnson? Yes. Trustee Rogers? Yes. Trustee McDonald? Yes. Trustee O'Loughlin? Yes. Tr Trustee Barshus? Yes. Trustee Wolf? Aye. Um, okay, the next item is furniture. Um, this is furniture for tech services. Um, it's the same furniture that from the same company. Um, which is why we don't have multiple bids on it that was that we used to replace the furniture elsewhere in the building mm -hmm. for a variety of reasons. Um, the tech services um, furniture was not upgraded at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, Heather's been able to turn to that and Gail and evaluate what's needed and so this is the proposal to replace to their existing but furniture. But the other reason too is, isn't it because it ended under the government contract that cooperative? Mm -hmm. well, so right. that's the real reason. Right, yes. but, but I'm just saying like uh, this is the person, we don't have to bid it, but this is the stuff that matches everything else mm -hmm. that we got. Yeah, I move that we approve the contract. Uh, yeah. 30,000 more or less. 29,464. For um, not to exceed $30,000. I seconded. Could moved and seconded. Any further discussion? No. We just need to verify the name because I'm not finding it. It's K I I. 
Is yeah, that it's the on whole the, name? It's on here. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, that's okay. the name. Cougar International. Huh? Okay. Thank you, Cynthia. <laughs> and Justine, the minutes just need to show the proper identification of who the contract is being awarded to. Yes, thank you. Versus Kevin Ingersoll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, just what happens to the old furniture? The same thing that um, we did last time? We had a conversation about that because Heather would really <laughs> ask, okay, what to do? Yeah. Because we want to make sure that if we can find another home for mm -hmm. it, Mm -hmm. We do, with you know, um, what about other ascending, you know, descending yeah. levels of priorities, uh -huh. and right. you outlined it. You know, the staff knows. We try to find other homes for it, and and in general, you sort of. We usually do, but it, it's a process. Yeah, like mm -hmm. first is other libraries. Yeah. Absolutely. For free, they can come pick it up. Mm -hmm. Second is other um, local area nonprofits mm -hmm. and or schools, taxing bodies, mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and then usually you get rid of most of it at that point. Then if it is a piece of furniture that's under $100, we can do what we will with it. We could, um, sometimes we take them to Goodwill. You know, we, we try to find an option somewhere. Yeah. That's a big job. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so if you know of a source. Yes, Jan. Please. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Okay, there's no, a motion you. on the floor to approve the contract with KI on the amount of $30,000. There's no further discussion. Jan? Yes. Trustee Johnson? Yes. Trustee Rogers? Yes. Trustee McDonald? Aye. Trustee O'Loughlin? Aye. Trustee Barges? Yes. Trustee Wolf? Yes. Okay, I think you, I'm not sure you have to do the next one, although it does involve money in a sense. And um, well. Dan, I thought of you on this one because this is a, another governmental, intergovernmental agreement. It's a consor it's creating a consortium. And in fact, when I was reviewing the document, I asked to look at the wellness agreement. Uh, we sent this agreement out to our attorney. He'd already seen it from other attorneys. Mm -hmm. He said, yes, it's fine. Um, and um, basically... It's a new one? Pen? It's a new one or a real one? New Technically, it's a new agreement, but it has been in force for year, a few years mm -hmm. without the document. So this is essentially making it uh, a governing structure for this ebook consortium, yeah. mm -hmm. so that they are able to have better. Um, they're able to hold my media mall more accountable for some of the billing and some of that, because mm. there were things that consortial members didn't know or didn't vote on and so this makes it really clear that the governing structure is going to be in control of that. And is it the same as, so, what is it, Rails? That no, um, I mean Rails helps with some of the pricing sometimes but My Media Mall is, it's Overdrive, the um, ebook vendor that we, yeah, uh, and we contract with um, Libraries First which is sort of a middleman who helps work with My Media Mall to make sure that uh, we're getting fair pricing and that um, they're abiding by the terms of the contract like Ebooks are so complicated because sometimes be like, well, you can you can get this title for 26 checkouts, but you can only get this one for uh, 12. You know, there's all sorts of things like that, and so it's important to have someone with their eye on the ball who is making sure that we are getting what we're paying for. I, and, I just went from the governance side. Yeah. That, that sort of Rails consortium or agreement? It's or? part of CCS consortium, okay. like our um, so the like, North libraries, because yeah. this, this isn't happening across all of the Rails network. It's mainly just the Northern libraries and the CCS system. Got it. But there are some downstate libraries that are... A couple are on here. Yeah. You know, it's part of the old North Suburban Library System Agreement. And so mm -hmm. when, when that consortium um, folded, um, some of the stray pieces were never um, put in writing like this. Mm -hmm. yeah. But Bloomington, okay. Champaign... Yeah. yeah. I mean, there, were number, there were a number of libraries that are included in the My Media Mall member list 
which were never part of North Suburban. Right, okay, so Schaumburg. Um, right. So there are so, a few Well, Schaumburg states. was yeah. part of North Suburban. But that, North Suburban? I think some of them came yeah, along right. later no. over time. I think, right. I'm pretty sure it started with the North Suburban yeah. consortium only. Mm -hmm. And then a few other libraries, it's like, oh, yeah, sure. we want good pricing too. Yeah, you know, right. and so they yeah. joined but on. But this has grown from what would have been simply a North Suburban yeah. enterprise. Okay. I move adoption of the Bimedia Mall Intergovernmental Agreement. Can I get a second on I that second one? second it. Um, I don't know whether this recalls a roll call, but Jan, you've done such a good job, so why don't you call the roll call? <laughs> <laughs> Trustee Johnson. Yes. Trustee Rogers. Yes. Trustee McDonald. Aye. Trustee O'Loughlin. Aye. Trustee Varshus. Yes. Trustee Wolf. Aye. All right. Question, uh, just real quick though. Um, each consortium or each member library appoints a representative. Is that you? Um, who? Th mean. We do appoint a representative. Okay. Yeah. For this, it would be Stephen, who's our okay. virtual service. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. gotcha. Okay. And um, the two membership uh, categories of individual members and members under umbrella organization. Uh, what is, is for libraries who can't afford this or who choose what do individual members get more benefits than umbrella organizations? You know, that's a good question, but I don't know the yeah, answer. I, I'm just yeah. curious. Okay. The majority of, the, the of the umbrella organization libraries are smaller downstate libraries. Right, that's what I wonder. And they're also non. There are also some non-public libraries in there, right. well, like oh. nursing library, school district. Uh, yeah, there are so a variety it's, a, of it's a mix, which mm -hmm. which enables some other types of libraries to participate. But they still obviously want to be part of the buying group. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, Thank you. All right. The next one is strategic planning proposals. There's three. Oh yeah. Located behind tab 12, and then there was another one that was passed up. This is early days, mm -hmm. um, and because of how this situation, we really didn't get a chance to go over this carefully before the meeting. Yeah, uh, I the addition one. I guess what I would say is that here's my thought: is that. Um, Read this. Heather, if when you're back next week, um, if you could send an email giving suggested links to board members so you can read some finished products from these organizations. Mm. Pardon? Okay. Oh, no, I'm saying yeah. Victoria Cook got hers in late, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. Very late. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and so that's what happened is she didn't meet the deadline, so hers came in late. Um, that is mm. true. Also, I was I was out of the office, unfortunately, so um, this was not as timely as it should have been. Mm -hmm. So um, when Lisa and Kathleen and I talked, we had the three proposals at the time, and um, there are some lists of the libraries that they did do, and I'm happy to send out links to to some of the newer, you know, the more recent ones, which would be helpful um, for you to take a look at. Mm -hmm. um, I think it, it's great to, to talk about this process and how you want it to go right. in terms of how you would like to select the consultant, uh -huh. but um, I think you might we you might consider skyping them in at the July right, meeting that's what for we your final doing. Yeah. Um, and I suggested to Heather that since we used um, what's her name um, Donna. Donna Fletcher mm -hmm. Donna Fletcher last time that we were not inclined to go back. We think it's good to have different. That in my mind the two that. Well, we should be seriously considering not having seen the other one would be Sarah Keister, Keister and Christensen. My pardon? And that, here's a thought. Um, we can just talk about this a little bit. I um, have downloaded the both the referenced strategic plans that were in the, the three proposals and the strategic plans that were available on websites of other libraries yeah, that were I looked listed, at some, yeah. mm -hmm. and I can share those with Cynthia to distribute if there's interest. 
Yeah. I I downloaded twelve. I didn't download that many. Um, I got a couple. <laughs> there. Yeah, okay, I didn't download. Any and frankly, I'm not any. sure there were any available beyond the twelve because I pretty well exhausted their list. There are some libraries that are in their lists that do not have a strategic plan on their website, hmm. uh, or alternately. Uh, it's you know they they're, they're into a new planning period, but whatever the if, if there is interest in that, I haven't looked at the new proposal to see whether there's any reference information there. But um, I do think that it's extremely helpful to see some of the products that they cite. I, I agree. I yeah. when um, I reviewed the product, I I had an impression. Um, also, our most recent strategic plan, which one of these bidders prepared, is a useful reference uh, for comparison purposes. Um, and as I said, I think that that's all information. And any of the materials from the other libraries, I can forward uh, what I downloaded because I saved those that were available. Mm -hmm. and, and then they could be shared with other trustees mm -hmm. if they want to take a look at any of those. Uh, here's the thought that I had. Now, the July meeting, we have to have the budget hearing before the meeting. So it occurred to me that we could come before then and listen to two Skype presentations or phone presentations. Maybe even Cynthia could, we could order a meal um, and listen to two presentations, um, maybe three. I'm thinking two. Um, I don't think we're going to need more than two. I don't think so either. <laughs> right. Is it like under twenty grand all in, or is this like phase one, and then there's a phase two, and then there's a phase three? This covers what they would be doing for That's us. That's it. It's all in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, but we've got to choose, and we. And I'm confused. Why, again, just back. Why is Donna? Why you want to discount Donna? Just I'm curious. Because she did it. Because if I look at that survey and she proposed a survey again, personally. That survey is That's a generic her. survey. It didn't get it, So it, it, you feel like she's just, she's just too routine in terms of what she does? Whereas and the other there, two, their yeah. processes are actually training to do in-depth. Gotcha. I think you yeah. get a lot more. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm, I'm not challenging it, just curious. Right. Yeah, no, yeah, I yeah, think yeah, that's yeah, the reason. Yeah, yeah. And I, even if we were, even if, we, we did her last time. She's not right. going to bring anything new than she brought last time. Somebody will, you know, give us a different approach, which we may or not like, but at least mm -hmm. it will challenge us in a different way. We have, over the course of the last I can think of 32 it. years <laughs> that I've been involved with these, uh -huh. we have not repeated exactly the same strategic planning steps and progress and consultant twice. <laughs> Because you get new information and different insights by varying the consultant and the the perspective. Mm -hmm. So I think that's that's just been what's wor that's worked for us in the past. Um, I do think one of the issues, and this is already addressed with some of the committee appointments that perhaps the one area that I would suggest we've not done is we've not focused on as much as our next round of planning should is communication with the community in a way that helps improve understanding of what we're doing and of our planning process. Mm -hmm. The fact that we have a columnist and and, another, and other elected boards who have no idea what our strategic planning process is or that we have one should change as this one is finished. I want to be sure that there is a wider appreciation for the fact that we do this because that has driven where we are in terms of our resources it's driven where we are in terms of our planning and there's no reason for it to be a well-kept secret. Uh, right. It was not intended to exactly. be a secret and I'd like to see if we can't make public awareness of it much better. Now we've done community-wide surveys, we've done surveys okay. of every household, but that's not remembered. 
No, and also to, to your point again, uh, awareness brings comfort and comfort in, in, and clarity, and, mm -hmm. and that's what we have. We again, it's really easy to, from an internal perspective to understand ourselves as a board and from an ex, from mm -hmm. extension with what people in the library are doing. But again, as you said, we um, there's a lot based on technology and based on a lot of what we have done. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of good things we should be sharing with the community uh, going forward, and that's again to the point of why we have the community that the committee now that, that Lisa and I will be fighting over. But yeah, but uh, <laughs> but uh, but uh, yes, yeah, so that's. Good. And also, just just as pointing out to the, as you all probably get the emails from the park district now. I mean, there's another one that came out today that was just a kind of a, a great simple explanation of, of programming they have coming up over the next couple of months, both at the Wallace Bowl and they have a, um, um, a movie that they're showing as well, uh, Ghostbusters, which was I guess postponed due to weather. But again, so those are the kinds we're doing these things all the time, mm -hmm. and we have the ability obviously now to to easily and and succinctly um, express those things. Mm -hmm. Right. But to answer your question, there might be additional funds. Say, for instance, one of the things that Maneka did that was really unique. Because mm -hmm. I go there a lot, so they still send me their surveys. Mm -hmm. Is after you do the strategic plan, they sent up and said, "What are your priorities?" Mm -hmm. And they had just four things that they had narrowed it down based mm -hmm. on all the input they did, yeah. which is another way to build awareness because you're given a say, but also they let you know that that process. That we're listening, as yeah. opposed to a laundry yeah. list of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there might yeah. be additional funds for for sure. that, but not for. I talked about some of that with Sarah, I believe, about mm -hmm. that she calls them mini surveys or something, mm -hmm. which is, I think, maybe what you're talking about, which is just target um, just a couple real quick questions no that quick you questions. Can mm -hmm. throw up on the, mm -hmm. on the online, and it's easy to address rather than a big, long yeah, or they can fill it up when they survey come process. For those who come in, in or whenever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're also participating in that community-wide survey with the school district, the park district. That's in my director's report. But I'll put it in all that, uh, and the village, mm -hmm. and that data will hopefully help us um, populate our strategic plan as well, because it's going to um, go to a lot of households. It's a uh, sorry, it's a phone survey, and um, they're going to be focusing on communications and uh, quality of life issues, mm -hmm. and so I think that'll be really interesting. So. Yeah. Maybe we can just limit it to the Armstrong and Christensen, at least in the short run. Um, and then ask them how much time they need so we know how much time to budget ahead of the well, 715 right. start time. Well, right. I mean, I maybe yeah. if you could talk to them and float our idea of a Skype I did that already. I sent okay. an email. They're both available that night. Okay, okay good. I already pre yeah, I, d I prepared that a little bit, assuming... I mean, I know Ms. Cook got her thing in finally, but it was very late and it's very... And it's the highest one. Yeah. <laughs> With no real travel cost. Yeah. It's, it's not it's quite what we We can take a look at it. If we want to move yeah. and look at her after we talk to those folks, we can. Okay. So um, why don't we plan on doing that? Ron, I'll take you up on your <coughs> offer. Cynthia, if you could make as many plans available, because I really do think the, the product what they help libraries achieve in terms mm -hmm. of a product will mm -hmm. help us in a decision making. We'll try and have a meeting in July. I'm not saying we're going to make a decision in July, right. but you know, maybe we'll be closer than we are now to a decision. Yes. So any? I mean, just on scope, um, it seems like this is sort of our core kind of response to the public discussion. and. Um, seems like we may want to consider uh, a clearer uh, scope on the conversation on parking so that the community plan clearly delineates we want this plan to drive a conversation on it to the extent this is sort of our public way of engaging with the community I didn't see it in these proposals you may have missed it but it, it kind of felt sort of like a general library thing where it feels like we may have a specific but you know that parking is always going to be a problem well, because that's what comes back in with most comments as to what their complaints are. Well, mm -hmm. look, I mean, to, yeah. look, if this is yeah. sort of our response, uh, which could be great to have a consultant run it, um, it strikes me that it's probably worthy of a specific task in a specific conversation and a specific discussion about it. Right. Rather than sort of generally everything that's awesome about the library. Um, but if, if this is really kind of the right, issue. I mean, part of what I read in these proposals is they're, they're going to come in to assess what our what our needs are, and obviously that's that's one of our top top concerns mm -hmm. right now. Is so you're, yeah, so yeah, so yes. I only read it. It didn't feel like oh yeah, no, I, that was well real yeah. Every strategic plan that we've done <laughs> <Yes>. since. <laughs> 
we I came on this board in 1984. Parking has emerged as a facilities issue. But to place it in the larger context, it's a facilities issue, mm -hmm. not the overall driving emphasis of everything we're doing. Now clearly, it's, it's still an issue. And it will be part of what patrons bring up, and staff, and so on. But it's not the only thing that we need to pay attention to. The recent discussions have focused some attention on it, but it still needs to fit into the larger context. So I'm not sure that we need to change so much. Those sorts of things emerge naturally from the process. Regardless of which process we've used, it's always come through as one of the primary issues to address. And we've done some things, we just haven't solved it long term, permanently, forever. One final thing. Um, it sounds like it would be helpful if whatever consultant sort of began the process by capturing all the previous plans that have been done and sort of clearly telling that story about this is the fifth or eighth or tenth or whatever. Well, I think we want to hear from them as to how they would start it. I'm not sure the 1984 plan is yeah, terribly well. relevant, but probably the most recent one is, um, for sure. So why don't we schedule a meeting, let's hear, you know, everyone do their best to look and figure out what, how these folks approach, because we're going to choose somebody. And we'll try and Are get you them. all available before the, the board meeting next month? Yes. I'm going to be yes. out of town. What day is it? July 18th. July 18th. Yeah. Okay. I'll be gone. Yeah. I mean, like, oh, you, so, so you um, 6 30. Oh. Okay. Well, and uh, I'll Skype in or I'll Skype in. Yeah, I, I probably have a harder time during yeah. dinner time, so I'll oh. give my proxy to or the president. Do you want to try to do it during the presentation time of the meeting? Well, how long is the meeting going to be? I mean, you could. We could give guidelines to the consultants and say you have 15 minutes. Or if you they have, can't you cover need. what they want us to know in 15 minutes, they're probably not the right choice. But you also need what 15 minutes of questions, 10 minutes of or questions, or 10 minutes answers. of, yeah, yeah. and then five minutes questions. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Okay, let me ask you a yeah, question. We're talking about, I think an hour. If we, need we the already budget. noticed yeah. up our budget hearing, we usually do it. I was proposing doing strategic plan budget hearing meeting. Can we do budget hearing, strategic plan meeting? Yes. So why don't we do it that way? Because mm -hmm. it's not a terribly well attended meeting. Mm -hmm. and, um, well, don't jinx it. Yeah. So why don't we do it I, that I way? Will, I will send you the notice so you can take a look at it. Okay, and then... We haven't done it yet, so that's fine. Okay, so then we, instead of asking people to show up at... So the meeting is what, a half hour? The, the budget meeting? 7.15. It's 15 minutes. Okay, so that's at 7.15. So then we could start our strategic plan meeting at 6.30 or a quarter to 7. Does 6.30 sound more doable? I thought we were going to do budget first. Yeah. 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 Oh, we're, 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 we're already posted. just what I just said. We already posted the budget. Okay, we'll do the budget notice, meeting we? then at... at we I'm sorry, you're right. We did. It's posted. It's yeah. posted, 15, yes. Right here. We, so we, yeah, we can't change okay. that. Okay, too late. Okay. So we, we can do six... Sorry, and sorry. We would need to allow an hour... An hour. So 6.30 yeah. strategic plan, 7.15 budget. I, yeah, and I would... And that gives that, us 45 minutes. Yeah. It's not that early, Dan. I make the 6.30. I, I, look, I... I'd be just as happy if Heather picked a vendor and we just approved it. <laughs> and, right? and Jan, uh, we need to pick this and Jan won't be present, but she would like to be available by phone. This is a note. So. After okay. you looked over the plans, you may find you out may have an opinion. we don't need I don't well, you to spend do. that quite as much time as Okay, let's, let's try it that, that way. Okay. 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 And what are we going to do? 6 for, six for the uh, people and then 7.15 okay, so for well. the budget. It was more and then the yeah, because we'll have time. And we can schedule some time if we need to at the meeting. <laughs> yes. To follow up on comments. Based, you know, yeah. see if we're ready to make a decision. And these two consultants in particular, the, the good news is there's no wrong plus, choice. They're both really they're excellent. They both plus, come yeah. highly recommended. Yeah. Yeah. If they have a different style, um, but you know, they're both excellent choices. Yeah. Okay, so we'll do it that way. Landscaping. Yeah. Oh, I, I just hoped for a brief discussion about um, the scope of this project. Um, I have been talking to landscapers uh, when they come in, and I know we have the hardscaping out front, 
and then we talk about tying in all the different areas of garden um, on the entire property so I just I wanted to get a better sense from you if that's the right direction to go or do we really just want to focus on the front or on particular areas the whole shebang the whole shebang, the whole shebang is not very much we don't have a lot of outside. No, no, we don't. But it would be nice to have somebody look at it with the idea that it is a whole shebang rather than disparate parts. Now, the one thing I would throw into that is that always, there's always something else you need to think about. I, and I suppose I might as well talk about it here. Um, I did meet with um, Tim Frenzer and Bob Alinsky, um to discuss parking to say that we were interested. Um, I said that all prior iterations of discussions because involved basically unifying the lot in some sense. Um, from as simple, which really doesn't amount to much, it would make it look nicer, just simply one lot, eliminate some curb cuts, so it doesn't add a lot of parking, to larger structures. Um, I, in my own brain, because I just get ideas without really realizing how much they cost, I thought, oh, well, why don't we have a surface and then below ground? That seems sort of spiffy, and you could do that. And um, they said that's pretty expensive, but when Barb and I ran some of the numbers, we didn't think it was that expensive. I mean, none of this stuff is going to be cheap. Um, so that's, I said, that's what all prior plans have done, is basically used our existing property. A lot of villages or libraries don't have property to de deal with, so why can't we start with the property we've got? But we're not close to the idea of cooperating with a separate, you know, with putting it in their co that corner that they want, just so long as we kept ours for our, and they understood that for our immediate, and then have some kind of open space in between. So we had a good conversation. Uh, they said they would get back to us with some concepts. They were going to refer hmm. that to staff to see if there's anything. At this time, they didn't say when they would get back to me. We'll follow up. Mm -hmm. So. And also, we have the the new, mean, we have the new apartment building now well, that, that didn't exist we when did, we talked we, any we time talked before. About that, and right. we talked about the concerns mm -hmm. that we all had, and that we presume the people of Wilmette will have, mm -hmm. um, in terms of how to address the increased density, but honestly, when you look at it, we've got a big piece of land there that really could be used with with a little bit of will and maybe more than a little bit of money. I mean, and that has always been the issue, is my understanding from the, from the village's point of view, it's always been a higher priority for us than it has for them. They've got stormwater, they've got Right, no. Streets, they've got things like that, so it's always been a priority, but it is the, the, is it where they choose to spend their dollars at this time. Mm -hmm. And it's always been where we're willing to sp choose to spend our dollars, but maybe we can move it along if there's something we can do. So it was a good conversation. Okay. Were they still talking about like moving Village Hall over there? I read their plan from... I, we, we really kept the conversation focused on parking. Yeah. Um, and my understanding is they had a couple of things that they were talking about and I indicated that to some, you know, without saying we agree to anything, but so long as we were able to keep the core of our parking here for the immediate use of our patrons, because we felt that was key, that if there was a plan that involved parking someplace else, although we would prefer this lot right here, we would certainly be willing to talk about it. I think it's not as useful for us, but you know, we can't can't always get what you want. You know, um, just so long as we keep our the slot here, maybe that's good enough, at least to start the conversation. It's great. And the underground certainly seems intriguing because it, the underground option seems intriguing. I it's like a little more yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. we had a What's proposal. Oh, we've had several postal lines. service darkness that. Yeah. Was going to I mean, put all of yeah. their vehicles no, below grade. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. We and would. include some staff parking for them and for the library. Mm -hmm. That proposal was actually 
drawn by architects paid for by the Postal Service, but it didn't get the federal support that it needed because the village wasn't willing to back it. Mm -hmm. We assume that any plan will have to include the same amount of parking for the post office and they will contribute nothing. Mm. Well, there's a, there's mm -hmm. third shift postal employees who currently lit, uh, lease spaces along the uh, that As edge I say, of we the assume property. that they will have to have at least what they have right now. The question it, that we haven't asked in a long time, I I think we tend to assume the answer, but it would still be appropriate, I think, to simply ask the Postal Service. Oh, if we can get far enough along, they'll be part of the conversation because right. we will need to know what they want. But uh, they're not, they've never been able to bring money to the table. Well, they were able to bring money to the table, and when you, we didn't get the support that was needed for Congressman Porter to make the recommendation that would have been accepted. Congressman Porter, you're talking about ancient history. Oh, I understand that, but that's how far back this goes. Yeah. Your sense was that Bob and uh, Tim were pretty open to like an intermediate thing? Did you get a good I, you know, I just tried to indicate our willingness with some basic minimums for us. We need to keep our piece here. I think at this point, they need to think about what they want to, and then we'll try and react to it. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't see us limited. I mean, as I say, my favorite would be open surface and then below. And the number that they quoted did not seem hmm. unreasonable, but it probably isn't correct either. I just want to comment on the survey. I thought that was very helpful because yeah. uh, okay. there were a few things on that that I had not. Well, one block is the yeah. most they're going to walk. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's sort well, of like, okay, fine. But, but even beyond the staff, though, again, we've talked about this we before. The helicopter, maybe the yeah, Amazon. But, but, but again, we, but based on that, based, based uh, as you know, I mean, based on the patrons that we draw to the library, whether it's young families or people in an older demographic, I mean, there, you know, there, there are those concerns to yeah. address, you know, that, that we're one block, especially in obviously in bad weather, can make a difference, you know. Sure. Uh, well, right? quite a few said two blocks, yeah. you know. Right. I mean, I think it, I, I think now, this staff is parking, staff. right. This right. Is staff. I know, I understand. No, no, I no, 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 I'm just, right, I'm just, I'm talking about the big picture. Switch. Yeah, yeah, I'm talking about big picture. Yeah, yeah, but, but yeah, so that's, yeah. The other thing, though, before you go into this, you had, Heather had asked when we, we met what we were looking for in terms of the landscape. And so two of the things I said, and I think Kathleen agreed, was drought resistant. Mm -hmm. So that you have to do excessive watering and open ground so that you can use it for flexible space if you want to do exactly. Shakespeare in the Park or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so those, that's what I was thinking. Wow. You, mm -hmm. There was some, it, and so I would agree. this would be, if yeah. you've got other thoughts, this would be the time. Mm -hmm. so, um, well, those would be primary with me, too. I'd have to think some more about that if there's anything else. And how the you can catch well, me anytime. And the I know the only thoughts, other thing too. was my suggestion that we look at it, and whoever comes, look at it as a total piece with connections rather than separate fragments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Okay. Okay. Um, Heather, the director's report. Yeah. So we did cover some of this already. We're still doing our salary grade um, structure. It's a mm -hmm. it's it's a very long process and job descriptions and everything, but we're still in it to win it. <laughs> so just wanted to give you an update. Um, we're continuing Learn While You Earn, which is our in-house professional development series. We can, and uh, so if you know trainers, like local trainers, um, send them my way because we're doing everything from customer service to CPR to um, digital technology skills, uh. um, all sorts of things that we want to bring to mm -hmm. our staff in-house. Mm. Uh, we hosted a luncheon on May 25th because um, Library Workers Day is traditionally during National Library Week and it uh, landed on Passover this year, so we uh, mm. postponed it until May 25th and it was super popular and that's where these summery decorations come from. Uh. <laughs> we had a fun time. Um, I attended the Kenilworth board meeting and um, they're ready to roll for a BNA, which they will discuss at the July 27th meeting and they have three new members. Um, hmm. we, our electronic payroll system is uh, going to come mid-July. Uh, we talked about KI furniture and all that. Um, 
Oh, and the computers. The 90 mm -hmm. new computers have all been successfully installed. Oh, well, congratulations. So that was a big, yeah. big project, and the staff worked incredibly hard to get it done as oh, yeah. smoothly as possible, and so I'm very excited about that. We also have a new website, which you guys, you know, you saw the demo uh -huh. at that last mm -hmm. meeting, but um, it's it's live. It's awesome. Uh, we're getting a lot of positive feedback from both patrons and staff mm -hmm. about it. I love um, it. Yeah, and if you look at the board section, um, Cynthia figured out how to upload all of the attachments for our. Wow. Um, nice. Yeah, for the, the we board did not meetings. upload all of them. You didn't do personnel. Well, we upload the ones that we can <laughs> upload that don't that aren't action items. Mm -hmm. uh, that aren't personnel or you right. know confidential patron mm -hmm. incident reports, of course. But beyond that, um, anything that's not an action item can be uploaded before the meeting, and things that um, uh, do require an action then can be uploaded afterwards. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are working with a local film crew who are going to film a movie, A Day in the Life of the Wilmette Public Library. Oh, cool. Okay. Uh, talking about public awareness, Ron. This is going to help us tremendously with. That and we'll be able to use snippets in different ways. So we could use, we could do a new, uh, like one minute snippet every mm -hmm. month, and we can social media it, and we can kind of keep the story going throughout mm -hmm. time. So mm -hmm. very excited about that. I had a very extensive mm -hmm. tour of the parks in the village. I was blown away. Seriously, it's pretty amazing. It is yeah. unbelievable. Yeah beautiful and so much variety of, of um, recreational experiences. It's just stunning what uh, the gem of Gilson Park and uh, mm -hmm. I didn't know you guys had a waterfall. Uh -huh. I was like, really? You got everything. <laughs> this, is, this is amazing. So I really enjoyed that. We also had an eaglet at uh, yeah. Gilson Park. Did I tell you that? Yeah. It's, it's fascinating. And the bird sanctuary. Yeah. And I, it mm -hmm. just, it was Fantastic. So that's my report. Okay. One just question um, you're talking about, particularly for new residents, you know, the film and all that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, do we do anything with the chamber? Um, to welcome new residents, yeah. We we do work with the chamber in terms of new residents. Um, I mean, for you know, just right. We're currently working with the village to get libraries um, information into their um, welcome packets mm -hmm. with the village because they're the ones who do that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. And Cynthia, congratulations on 18 years. Huh? Um, on how many? <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations on those, right? that total. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're also going to be doing um, some story times in August on the village screen. We've been talking a lot, trying to make, you know, communicate more and do more things uh -huh. um, both ways, like cl collaborate more. And the village said that they would like to have a story time in the village green to sort of draw families into that shopping area. That would be area. nice. That would really be so. nice, especially now I was watching on the way in because I drove by. We always miss their concerts because their concerts on the street. Exactly. Third. But it just, it looks so, you know, during this period of time when it warms up, that village green is used much more. But the idea of having families with a, you know, come in with their children, we already have them there for the concerts, doing story times or whatever else would be a great idea with the fountain and all. We're excited. Mm -hmm. All right, committee reports. Jan, anything on ILA? Um, well, <laughs> I was just looking at the, the first page where they talked about the legislation that the ILA has defeated um, multiple proposals that would have banned sex offenders and others from using our libraries. So that's just something that's there for you to take a look at. Um, I don't know this person, Doyle, but he won. Is he? Bob Doyle. Yeah. He's, he's saved Illinois libraries over and over again. Oh, really? Oh, that's yeah. wonderful. He's so, well deserved. Very dedicated yeah. public servant. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. So there wasn't much with this one, but a lot of interesting uh, stuff in terms of um, articles. And Northwestern University has opened up a new position uh, called, let's see, what is it? The 
a new library archivist position focused on the black experience of students and faculty at Northwestern University and going back quite a while. I was talking with Kathleen Bethel downstairs about that and she said that there was a woman who's like 94 now who wow. has had experience with the university and so they're really anxious to get going with this huh. and collect stories and ideas from people who have exp had experience at Northwestern University. So I think it's a really interesting idea. Um, there was an article about bookmobiles. They actually have a bookmobile roundup of a lot of the libraries that have bookmobiles now, and they're coming together to get more, you know, more and better ideas. But you had spoken, you know, a couple times about doing something like that, or, or well, the bike mobile, yeah, the bike mobile, it's being and that built. kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm in training. <laughs> they think. <laughs> yeah. So there is that, and then um, there's still. Uh, let's see, what do I have here? Oh, Payless. I just liked this because it said the Payless Park Police and the library team up to deliver library materials. And uh, I was talking with my husband. Like home, homebound delivery? Yeah, yeah, like homebound, you know. Interesting. And it's, it's all part of a you are not alone neighbor kind of program, I think, that the city runs. So and they can do a wellness check too, or yeah, the same. Yeah, it's a great idea. Uh, it's probably all rolled into one, uh, but Payless uh, does have a lot of remote areas to mm -hmm. it, and yeah. I just wondered if that, you know, that may have had some mm. uh, interesting. And what's the word I want? Repercussions in terms of having the police, uh, you know, do this. I was, but I was kind of tickled thinking of our police force, <laughs> and I don't think that they. Well, there's not an a need for that, but it is an interesting um, expansion of what the library is beyond our walls, mm -hmm. you know, for people. So there might be something that we might want to, um, I know that Nancy Wagner and a couple of other people do visit uh, yeah, uh, Marty, Marty. Marty does Marty home and, delivery uh -huh. every week, but yeah. um, it's a really interesting model. I hadn't heard of that of doing it with the police. That's mm -hmm. a very interesting. Yeah, idea. I'm sure there's a reason for that. So we count everything west of the Edens Expressway as remote. <laughs> <laughs> well, they feel it. <laughs> them, them westerners or whatever. Yeah. And uh, this ongoing. West side. Uh, a story about the uh, Evanston Library uh, who is uh, facing firing supposedly over a Facebook post. It, there is no new information. Nobody's, you know, and who, it is. Who a, was it? Leslie. The, I mean, what was the position? Uh, oh, she's head of adult, adult services. Oh, right. We talked about that. Yeah, yeah, right. We talked about that before. There's been nothing really new, and nobody knows anything more, and it is a. Uh, uh, not something that's going to be because it's a, a what do you call it personnel, a personnel yeah. issue. Uh, it's not going to be hmm. blathered out, but it's still kind of a concern uh, to keep our eye on what's happening there. And uh, that's a pleasure. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, advocacy. Now that you're on the advocacy committee, is there anything we should know with respect to? downstate that is relevant to our role here at this point? It seems like libraries are continuing appropriation. Like we, libraries got the state funds. Okay. So, um, okay. you know, they're in tomorrow through the 30th. Right. We'll keep we'll us posted. What's yeah. that? Think we're going to get a budget? Yeah, right. Are we going to go back to the tax rate to support our services? Because <laughs> that's the question. Mm -hmm. All uh, right. Um, we do have so. to do an executive session, so um, there are some communications, um, programs, et cetera, et cetera. But I would like to, if possible, close this meeting, go into executive session, so we can get out here and enough time for me to get up at 4.30 to go uh -oh. swimming tomorrow. Uh-oh, okay. <laughs> um, I move that we adjourn into executive session for the purposes of reviewing recent past closed minutes. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else on that agenda? Okay. I second it. And that requires a roll call vote. Okay. Trustee Johnson. Yes. Trustee. Yes. <laughs> Trustee McDonald. Aye. Trustee O'Loughlin. Aye. Trustee Barsha. Yes. Trustee Wolf. Aye. Okay. All right. Um, should we move next door? Everything's over there, ready. Okay. okay. Thanks. Yeah.
Do you want me at this session?